Hello everyone and welcome back. Thank you for following us all on the Christmas Crafts 2018 YouTube Hop. This is the process video for my project, the vintage style snowman pumpkin, uh, snowman bucket actually because I made it from a pumpkin. As I showed you right now, I use these basic little pumpkins that you can get for like a dollar. I'm pretty sure you have some of these lying around from Halloween from your kids candies or just decorations. I went ahead and first cleaned them off with alcohol, uh, just some rubbing alcohol, some household alcohol to get off any kind of oil, dirt, dust, anything that was on there from wear and everything just for the clay to make sure that it actually stuck on. I'm using this hardy clay. Now you can get this on Amazon or on uh, from Hobby Lobby. I will try to put some links up in the description. And again, if you guys do use my links, some of them are affiliate links. So I appreciate if you do, you're able, I'm able to make a little bit off of that so I can continue to bring content to you guys. And it helps me out with the expense for my supplies. <laughs> now, this is the clay and it's air dry clay. I liked it because it was very light, very light and soft, easy to work with. You don't have to knead it a lot. You just, you can literally start working with it out of the packet. And you get quite a bit. I didn't use a lot. The pumpkin's pretty big, but I didn't use so much that I maybe used like one eighth of the packet. So you can make several pumpkins if you choose to. I just started with making the little little snakes or roll little tubes, whatever you want to call it. People call it different things, but mostly in clay art, they call them snakes. And I'm first filling in the grooves of the pumpkin. The grooves are all the way around. I started this way because I wanted to make the face last. I didn't want to do the face and then start doing the grooves. As you can see, I'm laying the pumpkin on the table, so I didn't want to damage the dimensional parts of the face. Once I was finished with the grooves, I went ahead and started filling in the sections of the face, the, of the jack lantern the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. Now, what import, what's important about this clay is you want to keep it, you can actually keep it out like right here while you're doing it. I just didn't know how long it was going to take me. This is literally my first try at this. I said, hey, let's try it. And let's see what happened. <laughs> so I wanted to keep the clay from drying out because it is air dry clay and it will dry. So I just fold the top over the package and then stick it in a Ziploc bag right there as you can see it. I went ahead and I filled all of the gaps for the face. Like I said, the mouth, the nose, the eyes, and I smoothed it out. I tried to smooth it to get it to the smoothness of the, of the, of the pumpkin, of the full round shape. Now, one thing that I've learned is that I was, I'm going to use any Sloan chalk paint. Oh, here. So I, this is why I was telling you to make sure to do the sides first, because I was about to start on the face and I realized, oh yeah, I still have some of the grooves in the back. So I went ahead and finished those before I actually added the dimensional parts of the face. Now you may want to, even though I used any stone chalk paint, it did stick. It did stay because it does um, adhere to many uh, surfaces because of the minerals and everything that is in the awesome Annie Sloan chalk paint, which I get from the Bloom store here in Las Vegas. Uh, look up AnnieSloan.com and you can find local stockists because these are only available in um, certain in smaller stores. They support small businesses. There are several other paints that work the same way, but those are basically latex paints and with minerals added which kind of suck trust me they have a shine and i don't i, I per particularly don't like it because that's not the look that i want to go for when i want to do projects with uh chalk paint so i went ahead and did this now for future ones if i do more i will probably spray a primer or use some gesso or something just to make sure because there were a few little spots and i'm pretty sure that's where there's more of a coating uh some some things have like a coating or a, sil a silicone thing not a silicone thing like a, some kind of glaze and coating that it's just harder to work with but it worked now i went ahead and since there was clay in the filling of the mouth i went ahead and started to make the grooves for a little smile and you see i made little pieces i rolled out little pieces of clay to make the grin just to accent the mouth to accent the smile because when you smile you have those little little, little grooves outside of you at the end of your mouth for the nose i just went ahead and 
created a little cone and I did press my finger in the center of it just to make it a little bit hollow to get it to dry a little quicker. I felt that the mouth didn't wasn't as pronounced as I would like it to do like it to be. So again, I made little snakes so I can go ahead and accent the mouth. And basically, I just raised the lips. I gave it lips. <laughs> it went from having just a smile and no lips to having lips. And I kind of made a little drop down of the bottom of the mouth to just accent it and make it look more like that. At one point, my pumpkin, my, my bucket looks a little bit clownish, but I wanted it to be a snowman slash man, uh, man in the moon. So I can actually leave it out year round if I wanted to. That's why I chose to do the, the handle the way I did. And here I am now I'm adding the cheeks. Originally, I put the cheeks right next to the mouth, the little the little grooves, but it made it look even more clownish. And then um, I moved them a little bit farther out. Now I'm adding the eyebrows because I wanted them to be more pronounced. I wanted them I wanted you to see it at the top of the bucket. You want your pieces like the eyes and everything to stand out so we're, we're going to paint them but you also want them to have dimension and I wanted them to be expressive and dimensional and uh, to be able to show see look right here is where I am removing the cheeks right from the side of the mouth and I place them a little bit farther out not only that I felt that this way it gave more more of an item into the side of the bucket. For the eyes, I'm just adding little circles of 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 the clay again and with one of my sculpting tools, I am just pressing in for the pupil because I was going to add just a little bit of paint in there just to kind of define it. I wanted to make sure that it was all sticking out and all dimensional. But in here I am, at, because I wasn't sure at first where I was going to put the cheeks, I just put them farther out and I was so much, much more satisfied with the cheeks where they were being um, farther out on the face to kind of fill up. Because if when you're looking at the front of the pumpkin, it filled in that empty space on each side. I don't know what happened with this one group, so I went ahead and fixed it. And like I said, I would definitely use some gesso or some primer just just to be safe. I wanted to make sure I had it all set up. I think I accidentally like pulled these off or something. I have no idea what happened. See, these are the boo-boos that happened. I just left everything in there. I I left the cheeks how I didn't like it and, and everything. Luckily, these buckets have this massive opening on the top. See, right here, I'm trying to smooth it in. I think I'm just getting impatient and I'm rubbing it off. But I'm trying to get it in as soon as I can. Now, another thing that you can do once your I do this project of just the actual working on the, the project, it took me about an hour and a half, not including the drying times. I did take it outside and let it dry. I live in the desert, so it dried pretty quickly. Now, one thing that I do recommend that you do is that you sand it just with a light sandpaper, sand the clay down just to give it a smoother edge along the roundness of the pumpkin. Because I did a few coats of paint and this is any Sloan old white chalk paint that I went ahead and covered it. I wanted to it all to look uniform. I did one layer, let it dry and I just did one quick layer. Any Sloan uh, chalk paint is pretty thick, so you can do a thick layer, but I wanted to see how it would react with the actual pumpkin and the clay. I've never painted this clay before with this kind of chalk paint. I left the bottom. I didn't really paint the bottom because I was going to put the base that has the, the crepe paper ruffle. So I just did not. Here I am painting. Oh, and this brush this is just a regular chip brush that I had. It, it is a bristle brush. Bristle brushes work, natural bristle brushes, excuse me, work way better on this kind of paint. So I was just making sure to paint it in here. I did give the inside two coats and the outside just because I wanted it to be nice and rich and I was trying to cover up little cracks and everything. I did give it three coats, but the chalk paint actually dries in like about 30 minutes in almost any weather inside. You don't have to paint this outside because it's uh, low OVC. So you can paint inside no problem for such big projects. Here I'm using the Annie Sloan Antoinette for the cheeks. I 
I went a little bit out of the actual groove of the cheeks to give it more of an accent. And you can see right here underneath the cheeks and everything, there's a few cracks and whatnot. I didn't like them at first, but afterwards I really did like them because it gave it more of an aged look. And that is from the clay that I didn't smooth it out all the way, maybe. And like I said, that is why I recommend that you sand it a little bit once you're done. Once it's done drying for the clay, just to give it more of a smoother texture. But I was able to keep in mind, this is going to be covered at the end with Mod Podge and glitter. So some of those imperfections may not even show, but they're just nice imperfections. Here I am painting the eyes with duck egg blue. This is a, a nice rich blue green by Annie Sloan. The only thing is I was like, you know what? It's a little too dark. I wanted, I didn't want fully pastels, but I also didn't want the fullness of it. The good thing with the Annie Sloan chalk paints is that you can mix them and everything. And by the way, no, Annie Sloan is not sponsoring this video. I wish she was. I would take, I would take all the paint she wants to send me. But no, I just really love working with this paint um, since it is what we use to paint some of our furniture and some of our things. I like that if I have projects that I want to put out, it'll have the same tones and the same look and it'll fit in more, um, more naturally it would fit in just more organically now i went ahead and just added some of the old white into it so i use that instead to to it just basically lightens it up because you can mix them it just lighten it up lightened it up to give it a softer color that i was looking for like like i said not necessarily pastel just a lighter version of that duck egg blue now Funny thing is, I have a small pot. Uh, these are the sample pots, by the way. A sample pot will make will cover a good small project um, of the graphite, which is their darker color. They don't have a a black, black, true black kind of color. And uh, the funny thing is, the I'm sitting here like you don't see me do anything because the pot actually dried out. I don't think I screwed on the top all the way. Luckily, I did have an actual can of the graphite, so I went and grabbed it and look. I went through all that trouble just for the dot on the pupil. Like, that's it. That's all I needed the graphite for. <laughs> I know. Oh, and see right here? That little chip is one part where it started to come off. And I just went ahead. And when I put on the Mod Podge for the glitter, I just put some Mod Podge in there for it to stick. I went back with the Antoinette to go ahead and fill in the mouth as well. Now, I don't have the orange from any Sloan. I don't. I have. Uh, I used the Emperor Silk and an orange reinker from Stampin' Up! to make my orange color for my nose. Now, I totally didn't know I was going to do this project today, this day, or else I would have went. They do have, I think it's Barcelona Orange. I would have gotten one of the sample pots. If I do make more of these, I will use that one. So this is the only time that I used um, a material that wasn't for the painting that wasn't any Sloan. And that was just the reinker from Stampin' Up! And I think it was like pumpkin spice or something. It was just one of the darker oranges I have in my in, in my inventory. And there's the Emperor Silk. Of, and you see how deep, rich red. I just used a little bit. I put a little bit on my... This is just my acrylic block, by the way, that I use for stamping. I put a little bit on the side so I could blend it in little by little to give it that orange look. I didn't want it to be a reduced red, which would really make it a pink. Um... I wanted it to be more orange. Now, this color actually ended up brighter once it dried because that's when the inker was able to like basically blend in correctly, but it was a perfect orange for his little carrot nose. So I didn't want it to have just the the very light, soft, and these Sloan uh, chalk colors. I am going to make a glaze. Now, this is just a literally a splatter there you go of the dark wax now when you use dark wax that will stain it and give it a more vintage and distressed look i don't apply it directly on i used mineral spirits i just poured some mineral spirits and this is literally my can my empty can of wax that i use to make my glaze and i just dissolve it in there basically the minerals the um, the minerals will break down the wax and make it literally a liquid glaze as you can see right here the cool thing is that it gets into the cracks and the crannies, all of the little parts that um, that give it more character. You can leave it on there, truly. I put it on there, and you can see in the cracks, and then I just lightly dab it off, dab it off with a washcloth. And 
I go into the parts that I want more shading, as you can see right here, like under the eyes, under the nose, and the mouth, just to give it more shading. And you see, it went from a light, old white color of the paint to this more of distressed, vintage, more dingier kind of look. You can leave it, truly, you can leave the stain on there. I just didn't want it that dark, but I did want to give it darker accents. And the longer you leave the stain on there, the deeper it'll get. So I just literally was uh, swiping it on with the brush and then dabbing it off with the cloth. So it dried, I took it outside to dry, and now it's time for glitter. I use this glitter, this big old thing of glitter, I didn't use a lot of it, from, this one is from Hobby Lobby, but you can use the ones from Michael, from Michael's, and look at all these cracks, aren't they gorgeous? I could have literally left it like that, but I needed glitter. I had the glitter and I had that big old bucket, <laughs> I had to use it. So there I am, and this is just regular Mod Podge, I've heard that it's best if you water down your Mod Podge. I didn't want to take the risk of actually it not really sticking because this was a lot of glitter. Uh, one thing I did learn is when I'm going to do, when you're going to do this glitter layer, do it all at once. Mod Podge everything and then pour the glitter because the sections where I stopped and then started again, I didn't like it. It had like a thick layer of glue because it built up and I totally didn't like it. So... That is the, and once again, I just let it sit out there. Once again, I live in the desert, so I let it out in, I left it out in the sun, let it dry. Luckily, whenever I do clay projects and uh, paint projects, I can let it dry. See right here, this is the seam. I didn't like it, so I was kind of smashing it down because the glue does build up. It is a thick glue, remember, it's Mod Podge. And of course, make sure you have some place to catch all that glitter. These are just clips from the actual video where I showed my project. I wanted to show you the end result because I totally forgot to actually um, sh record the adding of the ruffle. All I did was cut out a piece of cardstock in the round shape for the base. And I just, you can see the ruffle trim right here. And right here, it wasn't actually done. Secret. As you can see that there's certain areas where it has that deep white. It's because the glue had not completely dried. Mod Podge can take a while to dry. Now, these, uh, this strand of stars, I actually ordered online, but you can find some right now at, I know that they have some at Hobby Lobby in the small tree trimming section. And I just wired it through the holes that it already had because it was a jack-o'-lantern. And I just wrapped it around twice. I kind of intertwined it to make a handle. And this is what's letting me use it as just a a annual piece if I want to, to use it like a man in the moon. The little bucket I just showed you, that Santa Claus bucket from Bethany Lowe is what is inspired this entire project. <laughs> so <laughs> I really hope you like it. These are some boxes that I had um, that I made for just the filler to put inside for the holidays. It's just easy ruffle crepe paper, you guys. I think I got this at like one of the boxes, one of the big craft stores. And the funny thing is, yes, you can see where the glue had dries. Oh my gosh, secrets. But you see how rich the orange came out? That was due to the reinker on the carrot. And I felt that it gave it a really good pop. So, but I still want to get the Mar Bar Barcelona, <laughs> Barcelona orange for that. So uh, thank you guys for stopping by. I really hope this tutorial helps you guys. And if you guys have these buckets just lying around after Halloween, here's a little something you can do. So thank you guys. And also keep make sure that you follow everybody on the blog hop. Comment on all their videos so you can be entered for the giveaways. Thank you guys. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye, everyone.